All right, welcome back. <clears throat> so notice what I call this video I just finished. And the video, I named it Introduction to the Chemitech Experiment, because this is the Chemitech Experiment. Test for the quality of K population means, test for the quality of K population means with ANOVA, which is analysis of variance. And we're looking to see, again, our hypothesis, our null hypothesis was, are these population means equal to each other? And, uh, and if they're not, we could, we could say that, you know, hey, uh, you know, there's a difference, a significant, statistically significant difference between these different uh, treatments, A, B, or C, and we're going to learn what a treatment is. And, uh, and then, you know, we'll know, we'll know that the means aren't equal. There's a statistically significant difference between the means of these three different treatments. And then we could investigate that further, right? But the first thing is just like noticing that, hey, there's a statistically significant difference between these means. And so that's, that's what this, you know, test for the quality of K population means. That's what we're looking at. This is what we're doing here. And we're testing for the quality of population means. And that's our, our null hypothesis, test for the, qual, uh, the quality of population means, where K is any number greater than or equal to 3. And so here we have our means and the analysis. Uh, we're going to do analysis of variance. And uh, that's going to tell us if those population means from different samples, if they are from the same, uh, you know, the same bell curve of, of, of probability, Right, if they're close enough to some common mean that they're like in the same bell curve of probability, or if they're from different bell curves of, of probability, right? So that actually, you know, when we did so, here's three, and that, that's samples estimating the population, and this would be like for one treatment, right? Like this is actually a different bell curve of a sample distribution, prob probability distribution of like. You know the amounts of time it takes using this method to assemble the unit, right? So that's that's what we're going for here. And to do that, we have to learn some new, new terminology, and we have to also learn uh, some new formulas. And this is the page that summarizes all of this. And this is so important. I'm going to copy this page, and I'm going to bring this up here. And we already have terminology, and I'm going to call this terminology. And if I could click in there, which I can't, so I, I have to like right click this and choose order and choose send to back. I'm going to call this one terminology number one. And, uh, and then I'm going to drop this slide in here right there and uh, analysis of variance. Uh, and I want to put in terminology number two, but to do that, I'm just going to copy this guy here and bring that down here. And then I'm going to just bring this in, bring it all over and keep bringing it over like this. And then I'm gonna bring this down and I'm just gonna call this page terminology and we're gonna make it number two, terminology number two. I kinda of like that up at the top, but this page is already pretty full. full. So we're gonna leave this terminology number two here and uh, we will always have that, which means we got one more chapter, but we could always come back up and reference this because you're gonna to need to know these terms. And so this is exactly the same slide as right here. And, uh, and now we're going to go through this. So when you do analysis of variance and you have a completely randomized design, you're going to need to know the between treatments estimate of population variance and the within treatments estimation of population variance. And to explain this, I had here's the between treatments estimate of population variance and here's the within treatments estimate of population variance. So I asked ChatGPT to explain this. And, uh, and I love ChatGPT. It is like uh, instant textbook but better because it really explains things well. And so in the context of analysis of variance, the terms between treatment estimate of population variance and within treatment estimated population variance are crucial for understanding how ANOVA tests, whether the means of different groups or treatments are equal. Let's break down each of these. And before we get into this, uh, we had, I guess we already talked about treatments, didn't we? So I'm just checking that. Hold on, I'm going to pause the video and make sure we cover that. One second. Yeah, 100%. I'm sorry. It's been a long day and I've been talking to, uh, had another class and so I'm like, what did I talk about in that class versus this class? So we talked about factors, treatments, experimental units, and completely randomized design in a previous video. So if you want to check that out, you could go and find the playlist associated with this video and they'll take you to that video. It's like the pre two videos before this one. And so uh, with that information, we're ready for this right here. 
So between treatments, and we'll start with a summary actually. So between treatments estimate of variance measures the variation between the different group means. So the variation between the different group means large, large value suggests the treatments have a, an effect. And within treatments estimate of variance measures the variation within each group. It captures the natural variability among the individuals within the same group. Both of these estimates are crucial in ANOVA analysis of variance is they allow us to test whether the means of different groups are statistically significantly different, right? So between treatments and within treatments. And so here's the more in-depth uh, explanation. The estimate captures how much variation exists between different treatment groups. It looks at the differences among the group means relative to the overall mean, the mean of all observations from all groups combined. So the group mean versus the overall mean. So if we just take that and look down here, here we have, this is the, the mean of this group, the mean of that group, and the mean of that group. And then we want to see the difference between these group means and the overall mean of all of these. So the overall mean of all of those is going to be, right, 62. Well, let's just calculate it. So I'm going to bring up the calculator. And we have 62 plus 66 plus 52. And that's equal to 180. And then we divide that by 3, and we have 60. And so we're going to find the difference between each of these individual means and also that mean of all of the means, which is 60. And so that's how I interpret this right here, uh, that you know we are looking at the differences among the group means relative to overall mean, the mean of all observations from all groups combined, right? The mean of all observations from all groups combined. How it works, if the means of the different treatment groups are very different from each other, the between treatments variance will be large, indicating that the treatments may have an effect. Conversely, if the group means are similar, the between treatments variance will be small, suggesting that any variation is due to random chance rather than the treatment. Mathematically, the formula for the between treatments estimate of variance, also called the mean square due to treatments, so the formula for between treatments estimate is also known as the mean square due to treatments, MSTR, is a sum of squares for treatments divided by degrees of freedom for treatments. So if we come back here, this is kind of like the sheet that summarizes everything. Here's the between treatments estimate of population variance, and the between treatment estimate of population variance, right, is also known as uh, the mean square due to treatments, which is MSTR. And like this is terminology jargon soup in a way, and so I put all this together so that it's all summarized in one place, and that's why it became another one of our pages for terminology, terminology page number two. And, uh, and so here you have between treatments, estimate of variance, or mean square due to treatments, or MSTR. Those are all synonyms. Uh, you know, you could say between treatments, estimate of variance, AKA mean square due to treatments, AKA MSTR. And that's the sum of squares for the treatments divided by the degrees of freedom for the treatments. The degrees of freedom for the treatments is K minus one, where K is the number of treatment groups. And so we have three treatment groups in our example. We have uh, A, B, and C, three treatment groups in our example. And then up here, we have the mean sum of squares. So this part up here at the top is the sum of squares for treatments. The sum of squares for treatments quantifies how much each, group, each group's mean differs from the overall mean. So each group's mean, right? So here's each group's mean, right? Here's one group's mean, here's one group's mean, here's one group's mean, uh, 62, 66, 52. And so each group's mean, how much does it vary? How much does it differ from the overall mean? So what I don't know is if I calculate this correct or if it even uh, makes a mathematical difference. And we could just check that out because we got 60 when I added these three together and then divided by three. But I'm going to take all this data here and just out of curiosity, so spreadsheets, I'm going to go in here and we're in chapter 13. And so I'll create a new folder and I'll call it 13. And then in this folder, I'm going to create a new spreadsheet and uh, create and share. And now I'm going to paste this data in, boom. And I'm actually going to try pasting like this. That's great. It just put it all in one column. That's what I want. I'm going to do an average on all that. And it's going to be up here because average is the same as mean. And we got 60 also, right? So we got 60 also. But I just wanted to check to see if we got the same result. Logically, I thought we would. 
But, uh, you know, sometimes I surprise myself <laughs> and I'm like, hey, that didn't work out. So uh, so we have here we're learning about the difference between each individual group mean and the overall mean of all of the groups, all of the data. And that when we calculate that, that's called the sum of squares for treatments. And it quantifies how much each group's mean differs from the overall mean. And then when we divide that by the degrees of freedom for treatments, which is this, we get our mean square due to treatments, which is also known as the between treatments estimate of variance, which is also known as the MSTR, which is an abbreviation for mean square due to treatments, I guess. All right, so again, right? Jargon, acronym, soup, a lot to know, but now you're getting this idea that between treatments estimate of population variance is we're seeing how much each for this, this first calculation, MSTR, mean square due to treatments, we're seeing how much each group mean, right, varies from the mean of all of the data, the mean of all of the data. And, uh, and that's the mean square due to treatments. And mean square due to treatments is your uh, sum of squares of treatments, which is this part, divided by your degrees of freedom. Okay, right? Takes a little bit. Got to wrap your head around it. And so mathematically, the formula for the between treatments estimate of variance, also called the mean square due to treatments, also called the MSTR, is that. And sum of squares of treatments quantifies how much each group means, uh, different from the overall mean, and degrees of freedom for treatments is K minus one, where K is the number of treatment groups. Key idea, if the treatment groups have different means, right, treatment A, treatment B, treatment C, uh, and the treatment is the independent variable and the dependent variable is like how long does it take to assemble the item right so we apply the different independent variables and we see uh, on you know this diagram here we see the experimental unit right which is how long is the assembly time the outcome is how long is the assembly time and i guess the unit is actually the unit that's being assembled so our treatment is a or b or c and we're applying that to assembling a unit and the outcome is the assembly time and we're randomly, ass randomly assigning those so we're getting a completely randomized design. So there's that picture from before. Within treatments of population variance, so I need to move this little line over. Come on over, there we go, that's good. And we'll just bring this one over a little bit too. And uh, what, what it measures, the estimate captures the amount of variation within each group. So we're looking at the, uh, the, the variation within each group. And so just if we stop there and we come down here, like, you know, I was looking at what is the range. I think that was in the previous video. What's the range? The range here is 47 to 59. That's the low value. This is the high value. The range here is 12, right? And then I was like, what's the low value? 58 is the low value. This is the high value, 71. The, the range between those two is 13 because 71 minus 58 is 13, or 58 plus 13 is 71. So we got a range here of 71, or a range here of 13. We have a range here of 12, and here we have a range of like 55 to 67, which is 12. And I think maybe I missed 55 when I was looking at this before. And so we have 12 here, we have 13 here, we have 12 here. And that's the, the kind of range is an estimate of like how much dispersion do we have in our data. And variance is also an estimate of how much dispersion is in our data. And this within treatments estimate of population variance is estimate, this estimate captures the amount of variation within each treatment group. In other words, it looks at how much the individual observations within each group differ from the group's mean, right? So we're looking at, and this is like, you know, traditional variance. Let me bring up that diagram, hold on. All right, there's that diagram. So like if, you know, way back in the day, chapter three or whatever, when we calculate variance, we're looking at a data point minus the overall mean, right? But that's like, okay, how much is the data varying? And here, here we're looking at, uh, here we're looking at, um, you know, captures the amount of variation within each treatment group. In other words, it looks at how much each, how much the individual observations within each group differ from the group's mean. How much the individual observation, so this observation, you know, point one, where's my little thing? Point one right there, how much it differs from the group's mean, right? Like, I don't know if that's the exact formula we're gonna use here, but it's like the same idea. 
So how it works, even if the treatment has, and we can look, we can see the exact formula right here. So, you know, that's the exact formula. We'll see that in a second. So I think that's it. We'll see. Hold on. So how it works, even if the treatment has no effect, there will still be variation within the groups due to random variability among the experimental units. So even if the treatment has no effect, right, there's still going to be variation within the groups due to random variability among the experimental units. Okay, so experimental unit, uh, experimental unit, the treatments are being applied to the workers. It's the workers who are having the treatments applied to them. And the treatments are assembly method A, B, or C, and then the outcome is the time of assembly. That's a better way to think about it. But even, you know, if the treatments are the same, we're going to have some random variability within, you know, how long it took. It might just be a few seconds, might be a few minutes, but there'll be some variability, and we want to look at that, right? So even if the treatment has no effect, there will be, still be variation within the group's data due to random variability among the experimental units, the different workers who are uh, assembling them. This is with the within treatments variance. So within treatment variance, right? Versus between treatment variance. So now you kind of see between treatment variance, we're looking at how much between each treatment, treatment A, treatment B, treatment C, how much each treatment varies from the overall mean. Within treatment, within, uh, within, what is it? What do they call it? Within treatment variance, within treatment variance, within treatment variance, we're looking at how much the data varies within a single treatment, okay? That's within a treatment. And so uh, it looks at how much individual observation within each group differ from the group's mean. Even if the treatment has no effect, there will be variation within the, group, the groups due to random variability among experimental units. This is the within treatments variance. It measures the noise or natural variability within the data. Mathematically, the formula for within treatments estimate of variance, also called mean square errors or MSE, is that. And so again, here we have within treatment estimate of population variance. And uh, within treatment estimate of population variance is also known as mean square error. And it's also known as MSE. So within treatment estimate of population variance, uh, which is mean square error, which is MSE, and that's equal to the sum of squares for error and divided by degrees of freedom for error. And so here's the sum of squares for error up on the top. Here's the degrees of freedom for error. And the sum of squares error quantifies how much the individual observations within each group differ from the respective group's mean. Okay? And so I would actually expect to see, you know, here we have SJ, here we have NJ minus 1, and then we have nt minus k, and uh, and this formula is slightly different than the formula that ChatGPT uh, kicked out for me, where they were using n minus k, capital N minus k down here, where n is the total number of observations. Uh, the textbook used nt, and let me see if I could find the ChatGPT formula so we could compare them and just try to get a little of our nomenclature uh, nailed down here. Hold on. Okay, so uh, I just did a little researching on this right now, and my conclusion is that it's uh, a little bit beyond my pay grade, and or we're going to figure it out as we move forward, one of those two. But you can pause the video here, and uh, and I asked it, I asked it that question there, please give me the formula for sum of squares of error. And so that's this part up here, and I wanted it to be explained. And so it explained it here, and it said the predicted or fitted value is this value right here, the second part. And, uh, and then it, you know, gave some information. And then I asked, how is the predicted or fitted, uh, you know, value, how do you get it? And it gave me all of this down here. And, um, and then, you know, uh, I'm just checking that to see if it uses one here. But I'm not seeing a one because here our textbook is just kind of like one. <laughs> We're just going to give you one. And, uh, but I'm going to copy this here just because, like, well, one, if you want to read this, you could pause the video and you could read it right now. And then two, you could pause the video and you could read that right now. But I'm going to put this into our, our presentation so it's there for reference. Hang on one second. Okay, so I put it down here just FYI, beyond, beyond my pay grade, maybe learn more about this as we move through future material. But this is info on SSE, so that's there. And uh, it's kind of cool how you could do that. So I just put a slide at the end of the presentation for reference. Please give me the formula for sum of squares error. And then uh, what is the predicted or fitted value for the ith observation? How do you get it? And gave me all that. And then we could go back. But, you know, like 
that's part of having that inquisitive spirit is that sometimes it takes you to a cliff's edge and you're like, okay, not ready to cross there yet. <laughs> Let's keep going this way. But I think it's really important to ask those questions. And so here's how we calculate the sum of squares errors. You know, we just do all that. And, uh, and I'm going to get some explanation for this. Hold on. You know, I guess I'll show you how to do this. So I'm going to download this slide. So I'm just going to download it as a PNG. And then we're going to come over here to chat GPT. And then I'm going to go grab that slide. So I'm going to click that and upload it from my computer and go to my downloads. And there it is right there. So I'm going to open that. And uh, in relation to the formula for SSE on this uh, image, can you please explain the nomenclature what all of the different uh and what what do we have here we have like n j and n t and k and s j uh different n j n j uh all the different uh n j n subscript j and we have n subscript j, we have s subscript j, s subscript. I gotta type again, s subscript j. And what's the other one? Uh, we have n subscript t. So we have n, n subscript t. And we also have uh, k and k. Okay, what all of that means. There we go. Let's see what it comes up with. Let's break down the notation from the formula for the sum of squares error, which is shown in the image as MSE, SSE is equal to da 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 da. Each part of this formula refers to different components used in calculating the mean square error and uh, sum of squares error in the context of ANOVA. NJ refers to the number of observations in group J. Uh, if you have multiple groups in your study, different treatment groups A, B, and C, NJ would represent the sample size for group J. So we're going from, from J equals 1 to K. And uh, so for each group, what was the sample size? That makes sense. For example, if there are five participants in treatment A, N would equal N1 equals 5. If there are six in treatment B, N equals 2, and so on. This is the variance of the observations within each group, uh, J. It's calculated by finding the average of squared differences between each uh, observation in group J and the group mean. So there's our variance. Um, in essence, SJ2 tells you how spread out the data is within a specific group. Uh, NT refers to the total number of observations across all groups. Uh, OK, that makes sense. And, and, and in the, you know, uh, in, uh, ChatGPT, it does capital N right there. Um, and uh, uh, for example, if you have three groups and the number of observations in each group is this, then you add all those numbers together and it's 15. K represents the number of groups or treatment levels in your experiment. So uh, J equals one through K is groups. And then K here uh, would be uh, treatment levels. Um, so you have both. <clears throat> for example, if you're comparing three different treatments, A, B, and C, then K is equal to three for here. And then this one is, uh, yeah, I guess that's going to be the same here, number of groups or treatment levels. That makes sense. Formula meeting. The formula calculates the mean square error, which is an estimate of the within group variance, how much variation there is within each treatment group. By dividing the sum of squares error by its corresponding degrees of freedom, uh, NJ minus one S J2 calculates squared, calculates the contribution of group J to the total error. For each group, you multiply the variance of that group, SJ, by NJ minus 1, which is the degrees of freedom for that group. That makes sense. Uh, you sum this term over all groups, J equals 1 to K, to get the total sum of squares uh, for error. The total degrees of freedom for error is NT minus K, which is the total number of observations minus, minus the number of groups. Simple example, suppose you have three groups, A, B, C, with five, six, and four participants respectively, and you know the variance within each group. Uh, the SSE would be calculated as da, 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 five minus one uh, times two, and you, know, uh, and you know the variance within each group, okay? And there's the variance, and there's the variance, and there's the variance. And the degrees of freedom for error would be uh, those, and the MSE would be this. 
And so there you have it. So I'm going to link all this for us too. Hold on. Boop, 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 boop. All right, so uh, I thought you might like to see this and I'm going to copy this right here and put this over here and, uh, you know, and, uh, and I'll just put here uh, formula explained and formula and, uh, and, and nomenclature explained, okay? And we'll just do that and put that over here. And, uh, and then um, I just want to look up nomenclature. Nomenclature define is the devising or choosing of names for things, especially in science or another discipline. So we're choosing names for variables, nomenclature. And, uh, and we want to link that to a new reference slide down here. So I'm just going to create a new reference slide. And, um, and there we go. And the go back is still going to work. And I'm going to grab these images. I took screenshots of everything. And I'm just going to drag those out. And you can see those screenshots here. I'm going to drag them out and drop them on there. And so uh, that's all moving together. That's all right. And I'm just going to bring this one over. And then we'll bring this one up here like that. And then this one's going to be our last one. We'll put it over here, and it needs to be smaller. And uh, and then we need to make this one a little bit smaller just so everything fits. And we'll bring this one over and do it like that. And that works. And we'll make this just a touch smaller. And, uh, and then we'll make this one here. And then go back should still take us back to that other slide. So if I click that and go here, it takes us back. And then I could highlight all that. And I can link to that by clicking link right there. And I can say slides in this presentation. And it's going to be that last slide, which is reference right there. And so now we could get to that formula and nomenclature explained. All right, so it gives us a little bit of an explanation of the sum of squares error. But what we're really doing here is we're working the material and we're becoming familiar with it. So if we talk about between uh, treatments variance or within treatments variance between treatments we know that we're looking at you know like what is the mean of each treatment and then what's the overall mean and we're finding the difference uh, between those treatments right like what's the variance what's the difference between those treatments and within treatments we're coming down here and we're looking at like what's the variance within a treatment and the other question I have for ChatGPT is like how do you calculate your variance with, within a group J right there? So um, you know I'm going to put in here uh, how do you calculate your variance uh, variance within? Well, I'll just copy all that. How do you calculate your variance within? Well, I should just typed it. With, well, it all worked out. It all worked out within uh, within group J. Do you use the variance? formula 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 like the one like the one in the picture attached uh, which I think of as the basic uh, variance formula in statistics so I'm going to get that image and so that image is right here this is that image right here that's the image right that's the basic one for variance like s squared and um, uh, at like you know like s squared the formula where um, s squared where s squared or sigma squared are being calculated and I'm doing all this because um, I'm new to statistics too so this was given to me as a new prep I haven't done statistics since grad school I got an A in grad school didn't fully understand it <laughs> you know learned it enough to take the test but uh, I'm showing you how to learn here and um, and so I think that's the one we want yeah that's the one we want that's this one we want this one and uh, and in doing and we're also spending time with the material and so you're seeing how I go about learning and I'm good at learning like I've done it my whole life and everybody's got to find the ways that work for them but um, you know uh, I've been around a lot of mosquito I've been around a lot of uh, a lot of learning in my life and different learning theory and um, and you know repetition is the mother of mastery and practice leads to progress and and um, and it's really important to have that inquisitive spirit and not just be passive, but to question things so that you could really work the material and dive in it to understand it. 
And uh, yes, you can use the basic variance formula from your attached image to calculate the variance within group J. The variance formula for each group measure measures the spread of the data within that group. And so, you know, we would just be using that, you know, uh, that same thing which I just uh, had open here. Let me get it again. To get the variance, right, for that one, this is the variance thing we already know right here in the middle. And for whatever reason, my mouse doesn't really show up, but that's it right there, right? There we go. And so there's the variance, and um, we would use that, you know, to calculate the variance. So when we're looking at our data here, right, here's the sample variance. Great. Love it. So we'd get our variance. And, uh, and then we'd use that variance as the SJ right here when we were doing that. So uh, that kind of all makes it seem pretty simple, right? So here we would have the variance, and then we would have uh, NJ is, uh, and if we look at our, our little nomenclature, NJ refers to the number of observations in each group. And so in each group, we have, we have uh, you know, three observations, right? Um, or no, each group we have five observations. We have five observations in each group. And uh, so that would be five for our NJ. And, uh, and then we had five minus one times the variance. And so um, if we look at that, maybe we'll see that being calculated somewhere. And so I'm just, let me see if I can find it being calculated so we can verify that. Yeah, so here's the textbook calculating at five minus one. Five minus one is four, and that's for each of the groups, each of the groups. It's uh, five minus one, you get four, and then you multiply it by the variance. And here you have 27.5, 26.5, and 31. And so it's really, you know, jumping in so that you could uh, truly understand what's going on. Um, but 5 minus 1 times the variance. And then we have the total here, which is the total number of observations, capital N, or N, NT, I guess maybe for total there, minus K, where K is the number of treatment groups. So if we have 15 observations, right, 15 observations, uh, you know, five in each group and three three different treatments um, and uh, and we have three treatments it's 15 minus 3 and so just looking for that I'm gonna see if that's here 15 minus 3 is right there so our mean square error is 15 minus 3 and so that's uh, that's it being calculated and I feel like we did a pretty good job understanding this slide between treatments versus within treatments and, uh, and just to review it, between treatments, estimated variance, also known as mean square due to treatments, also known as MSTR, is the difference between the averages in each group and the overall average, right? And the overall average. And, uh, and then the within, within treatments estimate of population, and you can see that here, the means of each group minus the overall mean of all of the data. And within treatments is really give me the variance. How does that data vary? And then multiply it by nj minus 1. And nj minus 1, as we saw right here, is uh, how many observations were in each group minus 1 multiplied by the variance of that group. And so that's giving us our sum of squares error. And that, sum of, uh, that gives us sum of squares error. And when we divide that by the degrees of freedom, we get the within treatments estimate of variance, the mean square error, also known as the MSE. And so when you do all this, right, here are your treatments. We have SSTR right here. Uh, we have SSE right here. And then there's also this SST, so we could produce this table. And then we have degrees of freedom, right? So you could produce this table and you could get your degrees of freedom. Here's the degrees of freedom associated with SSE. It's NT minus K. Here's the degrees of freedom associated right here with uh, SSTR, it's K minus one. And, uh, and then sum of squares total, total sum of squares is like these two things, my understanding of it, not sure if this is 100% accurate, but I have a high level of confidence that it is accurate, like with 98% uh, confidence. But here, you know, you kind of see this is all this stuff added together. And uh, this is why I'm thinking about it. If you know different, leave a comment in the description, in the comments below. But NT minus one, if you combine those degrees of freedom in the denominator, we have uh, NT minus K and then K minus one. It's like the minus K and the positive K cross each other out and you have, or they eliminate each other and you have NT minus one, which is what you're left with here. 
And then to calculate your MSTR, it's SSTR over the degrees of freedom, and the MSE, mean square errors, within treatment's estimate of variance, it's SSE over your degrees of freedom. And then to get your F statistic, your critical, sorry, your test value, uh, your test statistic, you get, you get MSTR divided by MSE. And when you have that, you can get your probability value. And then with that, you're able to create this, right? You're able to create that and you can make a decision. So, uh, you know, you'll know if your null hypothesis was rejected or not. Um, so let's just finish reading this page here. And mathematically, within treatment's uh, estimate of variance, also code mean squared error, is this, where SSE quantifies how much the individual ob observations within each group differ from the respective group means, and the degrees of freedom, where N is the total number of observations, and K is the number of treatment groups. So 15 minus 3, we have three treatments, A, B, and C. The key idea that within treatment variance is a measure of random variability within the groups. Uh, if the, if that's why it's called within treatment estimate of population variance, also known as uh, mean square error, also known as MSE, all this stuff right here, right? So the key idea is within treatment's variance is a measure of random variability within the groups. If the variation within groups is small, it suggests that individuals within the same group are similar to each other. So variation within groups is small. It suggests that individuals within the same group are similar to each other. Okay, right? So you have little variation in a group. It suggests that people uh, in there are similar to each other versus if you have a lot of variation. So here you can see the different variations. So here, you know, uh, maybe the people in that group aren't similar to each other. And if we, ha you know, but maybe this is a little bit of a better sample, like we have a little bit more of a diverse group where maybe here, you know, uh, they're more similar and we don't have quite as much diversity. So uh, degrees of freedom. Um, and then uh, mean square error, and then the ANOVA F test and comparing these estimates. In an ANOVA test, we compare between treatments variance, MSTR, and the within treatments variance, MSE, using uh, an F statistic. And so that's how you calculate it. If the F statistic is large, i.e. MSTR is much larger than MSTE, we have big differences between the groups. Um, but within the groups, we do not have a lot of differences. This suggests that the variation between the group means is larger than the variation within the groups, meaning the treatments likely have an effect. If the F statistic is small, MSTR is similar to MSE, it suggests variation between the group means is not significantly greater than the variation within the groups, meaning the treatments likely do not have an effect. It's pretty cool, actually, taking those two variations uh, so you gain insights about groups and how are those groups related. So here's a summary. Between treatments estimate of variance, MSTR measures the variation between the different group means. Large value suggests that treatments have an effect. Within treatments estimate of variance, MSE, mean square, mean square error, right? Uh, measures the variation within each group. It captures the natural variability among the individuals within the same group. Both these estimates are crucial in ANOVA as they allow us to test whether the means of different groups are statistically significantly different. Whew. Wow. That's a lot. That was just three slides, basically, that we've talked through. So we've done uh, two videos here, I think, now. Let's take a look. And if I look at my movies, We've got this one here, which is an introduction. Then we have the one we're working on right now. And, uh, and we're going to leave it at that. We did our introduction, and then we now understand between treatments, estimation, estimate of population variance, also known as uh, mean square due to treatments, also known as MSTR. We understand between treatments. And we also understand within treatments. And uh, within treatments, estimate of population variance is also known as mean square error. It's also known as MSE. And then we did like a little bit of a deeper dive into this and we learned about SSE, which is this part in the numerator, and we learned about SSTR, which is this part in the numerator for the MSTR. And, uh, and you notice just like the SSE, MSE, SSTR, MSTR. So the sum of squares for treatments becomes a mean square due to treatments once you divide the sum of square treatments by the degrees of freedom. And same down here, so just that little pattern. But this is a little bit of little, little bit of jargon soup, bit of terminology here. And there's the conceptual idea of what's going on, how between treatments and within tre treatments gave us insight into our data and the different populations. And is there variation within the between the 
measurements within each group and also between the groups. Um, and so everything that is explained here, right, this last part right here, um, it gives us some real, really good insight. But we've also, you know, learned about all these different terms and formulas and everything. So we learned some good stuff. We're going to continue this in the next video. And I will see you in the next video. It's a, it's a, it's a lot to wrap your head around. It's a bigger chapter. See you in the next video.